stars of wonder. Stars are like brilliant jewels against a background of black velvet. The study of the birth, life, and death of stars is central to the field of astronomy. Stars are born within the clouds of dust and scattered throughout most galaxies. Turbulence deep within these clouds can begin to collapse under its own gravitational attraction. As the cloud collapses, the material at the center begins to heat up. Also a dense hot core forms and begins gathering dust and gas. This material can become a newborn star. While the night sky has always served as a source of wonder and mystery, it has only been in the past few decades that we have had the tools to really look at the universe. Stars illuminate and warm the cold darkness with their nuclear fuel. But they also do much more than this. Let's take a look at our very own star, the Sun. The Sun at the heart of our solar system is a yellow dwarf star, a hot ball of glowing gases. It is only one star of about 200 billion stars in our galaxy. Scientists believe there are about two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. That makes our Sun one of an uncountable number of stars in the cosmos. The Sun is a great provider, and the Earth is ideally situated to benefit from its light and energy. We are not too close, nor too far as to be too hot like Venus or too cold like Mars. The Sun's energy provides the energy that life's organization requires. So where did our Sun come from? Although Earth was originally created from the Sun's leftover debris and dust that circulated around the Sun 4.5 billion years ago, our Sun is barely hot enough to fuse hydrogen to helium. It is believed that our true mother sun was actually an unnamed star or collection of stars that died billions of years ago in a supernova. Which then seeded the creation of our sun and the planets. Almost all the elements in the universe originated in the high pressure hearts of stars or during a star's violent death. Stars are responsible for the manufacture and distribution of heavy elements such as carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. We are made of star stuff. Stars come in all sizes. Our sun is about a hundred times wider than the Earth. If the sun were as tall as a regular front door, Earth would be about the size of a nickel. How does our Sun compare with other stars? Our Sun is an average size star. There are smaller stars and larger stars, even up to a hundred times larger. So how hot is the Sun? The answer is different for each part of the Sun. Arranged in layers, the Sun varies in temperature. It is hottest at the center and cooler in its outer layers until it strangely reheats at the fringes of the sun's atmosphere. The photosphere is the deepest layer of the sun that we can observe directly. The temperature in the inner photosphere varies between 6,200 and 3,700 degrees Celsius. The temperature in the chromosphere layer between 400 kilometers and 2,100 kilometers above the solar surface varies between 3,700 and 7,700 degrees Celsius. So it is in this layer and higher layers, it actually gets hotter if you go farther away from the sun. 
unlike in the lower layers where it gets hotter if you go closer to the center of the sun. The corona is the outermost layer of the sun. The temperature in the corona is 500,000 degrees Celsius. NASA's historic Parker Solar Probe mission is revolutionizing our understanding of the sun. The Parker Solar Probe travels through the sun's atmosphere, closer to the surface than any spacecraft before it, facing brutal heat and radiation. On December 14, 2021, this spacecraft touched our sun. It has now flown through the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona, and has sampled particles in the magnetic fields found there. So how and why do stars die? Usually the larger the star, the shorter its life. Although all but the most massive stars live for billions of years. When a star has fused all its hydrogen in its core, nuclear reactions stop. Deprived of the energy production needed to support it, the core begins to collapse into itself and becomes much hotter. Hydrogen is still available outside the core, so hydrogen fusion continues in a shell surrounding the core. The increasingly hot core also pushes the outer layers of the star outward, causing them to expand and cool. This can create a red giant star. If the star is significantly massive, the collapsing core may become hot enough to support more exotic nuclear reactions. Gradually, the star's internal nuclear fires become increasingly unstable. What happens next depends on the size of the core. The main sequence stars over eight solar masses are destined to die in a gigantic explosion called a supernova. In a supernova, the star's core collapses and then explodes. If the collapsed stellar core is larger than three solar masses, it collapses completely to form a black hole, an infinitely dense object whose gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, not even light. Sometimes the dust and debris left behind by supernovae eventually blend with the surrounding interstellar gas and dust, enriching it with the heavy elements and chemical compounds. This can provide the building blocks for a new generation of stars and planetary systems.